everyone, I'm Dawn. Welcome to my channel. Thank you for visiting with me today. <coughs> Excuse me. So I got a ponytail and this is a, a drawstring pony and um, it's supposed to be higher up on my head, but I don't know. That's the best I can do with my hair as short as it is right now. Um, but anyway, it's, oh shoot, it's a nice length and all. I, I like it. I'll probably wear it if we go out sometime. I have to let my hair grow in a little bit more so I can because you use the hair to kind of anchor it on there, so. But it's, you know, genie. So anyway, uh, in this video, I wanna talk about my... Now, I've had people in my past who have been a bit overzealous, but not quite at that level. And even this one, I would think, just compared to other stalker stories I've heard. This is a mini one, you know, and so there's something right there on the left. Maybe y'all can't even see it, but, uh, yeah. So let me just tell you the story. So as most of you may already know, oh, if you're new here, um, take a second to subscribe to my channel because I do all kinds of content, food, taste test, cooking, um, crafts, DIY, makeup, like special effects makeup, gory makeup, scary makeup, fun makeup, um, shopping hauls. Uh, sometimes I'll do commentary if it's a subject that I'm particularly interested in for whatever reason. So anyway, let's get into the story. So I used to work in this office and I worked there for a long time and, and everybody there, uh, was they they weren't my favorite people in the world they were like two people in the office i like now my sister worked for the same company at a different office i'm not including those people um you know so when i say this i'm not talking about my sister but there were at any one time about nine to ten people in the office and i i had two people in the office that i talked to regularly one of them, I trust, I still trust to this day. And the other one, that her trust was kind of wonky. It was like, as long as you're in good with her, you can trust her. But if you have a fallen out or a disagreement, she's going to tell your business to everybody. That kind of person. So I trusted her, you know, as much as I could. Um, which really wasn't that much. But I trusted her a little bit. So... But she would be the one I would always talk to about when me and Eric would go out and our antics and stuff, things we did. And I mean, we didn't get crazy or anything, but you know, there was a period of time where me and Eric went out every Friday and Saturday night after Marshall got old enough to take care of himself and we can go do things. So, so yeah, we would go out almost every Friday and Saturday night. So I don't do that anymore. It wasn't really even that long ago. I mean, in the last 10 years or so. But we, um, or there was this gentleman who would come in the, oh wait, before I talk about him, let me talk about the person that was the stalker. And we're going to name her Teresa. That's not her actual name. She was the office snitch. Like she would like go tell on people like, um, for things that weren't even things like oh, Dawn used three reams of paper yesterday or something like that. She was just a little tattletale about things that didn't matter. She figured if she kept telling the boss about these things, eventually something would land and she would um, get glory from it, you know, and she, she is just an awful person. She would, and she eavesdropped too. If anybody's seen nine to five, the movie nine to five, there's a person in it who's like, the boss is like right hand lady. And there's one scene where she's in the bathroom eavesdropping on Dolly Parton, Jane Fonda and Lily Tomlin. And she's writing little notes on the toilet paper in the stall. And she's all like bunched up like this. So you can't see your feet. And, <clears throat> you know, and she types up a report and gives it to the boss. That's who she reminds me of this Teresa. And, um, and she eavesdropped too, which I think I just said that, but, she would always like mm -hmm. listen in when we would all chat, you know? And um, 
So I would talk to my, my one friend worked in the same office, but she had kind of a separate room, but the door was open and you could hear everything that went on in there. And I would go in there and talk to her and, you know, we'd laugh and chat and a little, you know, a lot like that. But the, um, but this little heifer, you know, she's like listening, like trying to pick up on something that she can report back to the boss lady, you know, and usually it was just, uh, silliness like oh did you see that commercial with the squirrel or something like that and or we had this uh ongoing thing where this recurring joke that we would do where she had a little basket on her desk and had lotions and stuff in it and I would use the lotion and I would hand it back to her and say here put the lotion in the basket <laughs> you know from uh <laughs> silence of the lambs my brain does not work like it used to, guys. It just doesn't. But anyway, so now I'm meandering. I'm just telling funny things from work. But that was always funny. We would always go, put the lotion in the basket. <laughs> and um, so anyway, there was a man that would come into the office and do work every once in a while. And he and I got pretty close. Like we talked every day because usually he was set up right where I was sitting. So we chatted all the time and um so he had a band and he would ask me to go see his band and stuff so me and eric decided one night oh we'll go see his band so we went to this restaurant it was like this little waterfront restaurant um nice location terrible food and dirt this that is a whole nother video right there that place that ugh, oh dirty they brought my husband, my husband ordered a pitcher of beer. They brought, this is when he still drank. They brought him a glass and it had like orange juice pulp in it and stuff. It was dirty. And I mean, it was like obviously dirty. It wasn't like a thumbprint. It was like had leave-ins in it, you know? It was weird. And then my plate one time was dirty. It was, that place was weird. But anyway, so we would go here. We went here this one night and watched his band play. And then... We went a couple times to see him and, and it was fine. And then I told my friend at work about us going to see the band. So Teresa, the next time we go see his band, who shows up? Teresa shows up, doesn't speak to us or anything, just comes in, sits down with her husband and watches the band. It's so weird. But like when I would go to the bathroom, she would be walking in the bathroom as I'm walking out and things like that. And at first I didn't think it was too weird. I thought, well, she's just supporting him. No big whoop. And I didn't think anything of it. And then we saw her there a second time and then a third time. And then I was like thinking, oh, she has a crush on him. I bet that's why, you know, and, but she was going there with her husband. So I don't know. But then we went to another restaurant to see them play totally different restaurant. And I was telling my friend at work about it and we're going up to, we'll call it Billy's, but it wasn't Billy's, um, this place to, uh, see his band play there. I'm going to like it better. It's inside. So, and she said she might show up, you know, if she could, of course she didn't. She never showed up for anything ever. And we're at the restaurant and in comes, Teresa and her husband, and I'm like, huh. So either she has a thing for him or she's following me. And still, I was like, I don't think she's following me around. That can't be it, you know? And then at work uh, one day, I was away from my window and my friend was like opening the window for me. And it was one of the people that works in another area and they didn't know my name. So they said, where's the little girl that sits up here? And you know, she said, oh, she just stepped out for a minute. She'll be right back. And she goes, what's her name? And they said her name. She goes, oh, I just love her. Her eye makeup always looks so pretty and she wears the cutest clothes because I got dolled up for work. Let me tell you what, you know, it was better than this mess, you know? And, um, yeah, so. <laughs> She was like, uh, I'm sorry. It's just thinking back on it. It's so funny. 
but she was like, she's just so cute with her makeup. She just looks so cute all the time. She doesn't belong here, which I didn't. And so when I came back, they just chatted until I came back and then I helped them. And they were like, just praising me. Just, it was a little love bomby, a little, not quite like creep show art, but you know, I'm like, okay, all right, just go away now. And <laughs> cause that makes me uncomfortable. Um, so, oh, and I also want to point out that I always wore flitty skirts, you know, um, over my knee. They were, they were short. They were long enough to get away with wearing to work, but they were shorter because I always like my legs. And hi, Tina. And all of a sudden, this heifer, Teresa, starts wearing skirts similar to mine, not quite like mine. Um, because she ain't never going to be like me. No, I'm just kidding. And then she started wearing eye makeup, which she never wore before. And then, and she always wore sneakers. And then she started wearing more dressy shoes and stuff. And I didn't say anything. I thought, you know, I'm not going to be so narcissistic to think she's trying to uh, emulate me. But then my friend pulled me aside and said, why is she wearing eye makeup all of a sudden? And, uh, you know, little skirts and things. And, um, I'm like, I don't know. And I, I had, um, I did certain things like I would, uh, just do silly things at work to express a distaste for something or like for something. She started doing those things and it just looked weird. And then my friend was like, see, she's trying to act like you. And I'm like, no, it's just something you start doing because you've been around somebody for a while. It, she's not trying to act like me. And she goes, that bitch is trying to act like you. <laughs> so I was like, no. And then, um, so one night we went to another like nightclub bar place and she showed up there. She showed up there. And I did tell my friend at work that, oh, you know, tonight we're going to such and such. And she was like, okay, have fun. And then she jokes around and goes, maybe your friend will show up. And she did. She showed up with her husband and the same thing. She would, and she kept walking past my table, like where we were sitting like 15 times. And then I was like, okay. And so between this place, the, the waterside place and the other venue, you know, we were bouncing around and going to different places and she would just show up at any place I talked about at work. And then, oh, I want to mention another reason why I thought she might have a crush. Oh, and, and, and the guy, the friend, he didn't, he wasn't playing at this other bar that she showed up where she walked by my table 15 times. His band wasn't playing there. So then we were like, well, that's, then that's odd, you know, because I seem to distinctly remember my friend asking me, oh, is his band playing there? And me saying no. So if she was eavesdropping to find out where I was going to be, she would have known that he wasn't playing there. So <clears throat> I still didn't think much of it because I know that this one place we were at was pretty close to where she lived. And then um, we went to Applebee's one night. I, I was talking to my friend at work and she goes, oh, what are you cooking for dinner tonight? And I'm like, no, I think we're just going to go to Applebee's or something. Who shows up at Applebee's? Teresa and her husband. And... I was like telling Eric, I'm like, oh, Teresa and her husband are here. And he's like, that bitch is following you. She's obsessed with you. And I'm like, no. And he, he goes, look at what she's wearing. And I look and she's wearing a uh, short black skirt. Everybody wears short black skirts around here. But like she had like this pink sweater on similar to a pink sweater I had. I'm like, that doesn't mean anything. But. Then she had a headband with a big flower in it. I wore headbands with flowers in it, like on the one side sometimes. Um, enough to where it became a thing. You know what I mean? So I was like, this, uh, it's fine. And, oh, I also want to tell you, she would like time people when they would leave the office to go to use the restroom or run, run to get something to eat or something. She would time them. And like, cause I, and I know this cause I saw her do it one day because I was over by a shelf by her desk cause I had to look for something. And I noticed, I guess I was eavesdropping too. She 
set her timer on her phone, like the, the, the stopwatch. And I was like, what's she doing? And then I noticed when the girl got back, she stopped it. So she would, re and she would report this to the boss. And um, then the boss would come out and say, hey, so-and-so, um, I understand you went to a tri for a trip to the bathroom and took 20 minutes. And like, well, she stopped. At, she only asked problematic people that. She didn't ask it very often, but I, I heard that conversation or that part of it. it. was no big deal. Nothing happened. But she would do that. She would report the time, our in and out times of the, uh, you know, away from our desk to the boss. But anyway, back to the stalking, though. Um, we were... I've totally lost my train of thought. Oh. We were um, talking, me and my friend, in the office. And she said, Should say a place you're going to be. Me and you will ride out there and wait in the car for them to show up. Like, so we're going to stalk her and her husband. <laughs> she goes, yeah. <laughs> and I was like, like, okay, well, there's this little bar on. And I was like naming it. And I said, and it's called such and such. And I'm like, you want to go out there with me tonight? Just for like an hour or so. And just play a game of pool or whatever. And she was like, yeah. So then me, her, and my husband <laughs> got in the car. Um, we had my husband drive cause you know, we were like, uh, we were, you know, being spies <laughs> and we showed up and we just parked and we kind of parked by a dumpster and we were sitting there for about 30 minutes and who pulls up and we don't know what her car is exactly, but who gets out of their vehicle, her and her husband and they go inside. And I'm like taking pictures with my phone like I'm like a spy or something. Like, choo, choo, choo. And my friend is like, why are you taking pictures? You're the one that, you know, you're the one that we would show the pictures to. So why are you taking me? I'm like, I don't know. And, but I was like, oh my God. And then we all went to Chili's and had appetizers. But that crap was funny. And then I was like, like you know, I'm not going to talk to you about where I'm at in the office anymore. But anytime I slipped up and did that, she would show up at the place I was at. And then I had seen a really cute skirt and blouse at Walmart one day. And so I bought it and I wore it to work the next business day. And one of my coworkers asked me about it. And I said, oh, I got it at Walmart. It was like $15 altogether. And this was when clothes were less expensive at Walmart. Not that Walmart's expensive, but you know what I'm saying. And... Do you know, would, would you believe it if I tell you that a few days later she showed up in that outfit, you know, not looking as cute as I was, but I'm just being snotty. But yeah, she was everywhere I went and it was weird. And she was the creepy, and I just started calling her that creepy little girl, you know, and, but you know, I quit working there and moved away from that area and I haven't seen her since. What's funny is I probably live closer to her now, but I haven't, haven't seen her since those days. And I'm glad of it. She was creepy. You know, it was weird. It's really weird stuff. So, yeah. So she wasn't like dangerous or anything, but she could have gotten dangerous. Oh, one day when, um, I was talking to my friend that was in the van outside of the office. She comes out of the office and hands him a box of chocolates, uh, homemade chocolates for uh, you know, as a little Christmas gift. Then she goes back inside and I'm like, I wouldn't eat those if I were you. <laughs> and he's like, be nice. I'm like, no, she might have a potion or something in them. But yeah. That was, weird. anyway, that was my story of mine my stalker light so tell me what you think of it would you have confronted her I'm interested to know if you would have said hey why do you come to everything I go to you know um, just let me know how you would have reacted how you would have handled the situation um, 
one day, this is going to be grotesque, that one day she reported my time out and in to my boss. And I went in there and she goes, Teresa says you leave at the same time every day and, and you're gone for about 20 minutes. I'm like, yeah. It's called my break. I'm actually, I actually can be gone 30 minutes, but. And she was like, oh, okay. <laughs> and the boss was just whatever. She, she was, she's another story too. No, she wasn't that bad. Um, she hated me for some reason, but I don't know. Towards the end, she just really started hating me. And I'm like, you know what? I don't need this anxiety and stress in my life. It's too much. And, uh. Now I'm just doing this and I'm happy. I'm happy. So anyway, <clears throat> as happy as I can be doing this, you know. But anyway, that's it. Um, I do want to know what you think. So please leave in the comments below your opinion. And I really want to know how y'all would have handled it. I'm I'm interested. There's a few of you out there. I'm really interested in, in, in hearing what you would do because I know it's probably very colorful. So... Anyway, ran on a long time. Sorry about that. Thank you so much for watching, and I will talk to everyone later. Bye! Brian, what's going on, little baby boy? You're mama's baby, aren't you? You're mommy's baby. Okay.